This week in Obsidian, the Canvas Core plugin has been released to the public, so it is no longer an insider build. This allows us to add cards, file cards, image cards to an infinite canvas and we can group information, align information and there's far more features in the canvas plugin that you can explore on the Obsidian help page. Obsidian also won the note taking World Cup app and this was a set of polls run on Twitter by Francesco D'Alessio and Obsidian beat Craft in the final having beaten Notion in the semi-finals just around earlier. But there have been lots of new plugins introduced and lots of plugin updates that could change the way you use Obsidian. The first being Obsidian Auto Glossary. There's only one setting, but this plugin allows you to right click on a folder and then create an index file, glossary file, or a combination of index and glossary file for all the files inside of that folder. You can change the destination, whether it be in the folder you've selected or somewhere else. You you can then change the file name of the index or glossary, change the file order that is shown inside of the index, moderation, time, or anything else in that drop down list, and then you can change the file type, which is essentially glossary index or glossary and index. Once you've created that file, it will put the file in the destination you've selected and then input an index section and a glossary section, if you've selected for both of them, the index section giving you a list of the files in the folder. So you can see numerals, markdown, example file, they are the three files from the example folder. And the glossary section does the same thing, but it embeds the files as a heading and then shows what's the content of the file in the index or glossary file that you've created. If you then create a new file, add that new file to the folder at the moment, from what I can see, it doesn't update the index or glossary, so you'd need to delete the file and then recreate the glossary or index file. Then any changes that you've made, so the new file will appear, and any changes you've made inside of the file will also appear as an embed. The next plugin is called Double Click Tab, and you can change the setting of the double click on the tab to Close Tab, Rename File, or Smart Tab. And what this means is that when you click on a tab twice, so double left click onto a tab, it will then close that tab. When you're on a file that has a name, you can double left click on the tab and it will automatically go to the rename section of that tab. Then if you select the smart tab, you can use shift, control and alt whilst double clicking to give you different options. So if you double click, you can open it up as a new window, that tab specific new window, or you could use it to open it up below. So that's the horizontal split or the vertical split, so right and up down splits. The hidden folder plugin does kind of exactly what you would expect. It hides folders that you specify inside of the settings. You can use regular expressions, but who really knows what that is? So what I do is type out the name of the folder, save the setting, make sure the setting is actually enabled, and then the folder will be hidden from the files core plugin in the sidebar that you have it located in. Now the make.md plugin changes Obsidian quite drastically and there are lots of features similar from other note taking tools like Notion. So to start with, Spaces. Spaces is like the files core plugin but gives you more flexibility. So you can create different spaces. You can see I've got a test space and test and you can create as many spaces as you want. You can then move files and folders into those spaces, toggle folders, toggle spaces, add new notes and new folders into those spaces. And any new file that's added to a space can be dragged, accessed and moved just like any normal file inside of the files core plugin. 
You can also add stickers to files and folders. And a sticker is essentially an emoji. So it brings up the menu for you to search, add, and it allows you to customize the look of a file and a folder inside of your spaces sidebar section. And as you can see, you can have a file into different spaces, but when you go back to the files core plugin, it's only in one folder. So it's stored as one file, but located in multiple spaces, kind of like a duplicate view. When you then have a look at the maker mode and go into a file, you can backslash and then enter any of the normal markdown formatting. And when you look all the way down the bottom, you can see a flow note, and that is unique to make.md, but something worth noting at the moment is if you add a bullet point and then backslash and then add something else, it will add the text right in line so you can mess around with some of the markdown a bit. Then when you highlight words inside of text, you get a, a toggle menu, a pop-up menu, and you can change the text color, which adds some HTML and CSS stuff to the markdown and basically changes the color. And then you can highlight and add a background as well. This is subject to change with future updates because colors and adding code to text can be done in different ways. But when we go back to that flow note, you can see it's very similar to a note embed. So when you put the exclamation mark and a link to a file, it will embed that file. So we've got the example file. We can open the link because at the moment, the example file is completely empty. And if we go in there and we add some text, so nothing in here, then go back to the untitled file and you can see it's linked and the toggle flow is on. When we turn it off, it's just a normal embed. Now it's got one exclamation mark. If we turn the toggle flow on, it's got two exclamation marks. And the difference is that when I click in the embed, I can edit it. I can edit the example file embed inside the untitled file. So you can see when I open up the example file and untitled file next to each other, if I type in the flow note embed, it will change the information inside the example file at the same time. Then if I add something in the example file, it's also going to show in the untitled file. This mimics much of the features of things like Roam and LogSeq that allows you to type in different embeds of files known as transclusion, I think. And then we go to the other elements inside of the settings. You can see the maker mode, the inline styler. You can turn that on or off. The hint text, turn it on or off. Show sidebar tabs, which are the core plugins inside of the sidebar. So you can show them all or hide them all. And then there are some other settings inside of make that actually impact the core settings of Obsidian. This next plugin, Numerals, was actually featured in the Obsidian October video that I did, and I'll link a card at the top, but this allows you to do mathematical calculations inside of a code block inside of a file in Obsidian, meaning that you can essentially have a calculator in your Obsidian notes. Obsidian ASCII math is very similar to numerals in that you can do math inside of a code block, but it uses some different syntax, i.e. different typing that you can put in. If we go into the file, you can put AM or ASCII at the top of the code block and then put your desired math inside of the code block. This is in the source or editing view. And then when it's previewed, either using live preview or reading mode, it will then show what you've written. Obsidian Markdown Export, again, named aptly, does an Obsidian Markdown Export. So you can pick a file inside of Obsidian, export it to traditional Markdown, so getting rid of some of the Obsidian-specific Markdown by right-clicking on a file and export, and it will create an attachments folder for any images inside of the file. And you still get the file inside of Obsidian, but it's changed to the markdown of your choice, which can be changed inside of the settings of the plugin. And in this case, it goes to the output path attachments file and uses GitHub flavored markdown formatting. 
The same page plugin is a little bit traitorous because you can use the same file inside of Obsidian, Logseek, or Roam Research, two other note-taking apps, using some settings, but I personally don't use either of those other tools, so I don't have a way of setting this up, but you can go through, create an invite code, and then essentially sync your Obsidian with Logseek and Roam. Now moving into update territory, the projects plugin has had a bit of a big update to some of the features you can do in the views inside of your project. For those unfamiliar, you create a project through a folder or a data view query, and now you can add a color two files inside of that folder. So in the table, you can add a color depending on the metadata or column of the information in the file. So you've got the name and the path here at the moment, then add some other information. Is it empty? Is it not empty? So you could add a color for that. And in a very similar sense, you can now add filters doing the same sorts of thing, but filters out the files that the table view shows through the metadata or the column information that you have and adding more and more filters. Something else that they've added inside of the gallery view is now when you add an image via a cover, you can then fill image or fit image, which changes the look of the image in the gallery view. For those unfamiliar, you can go into a file, add whatever name of the metadata or column, for me it's cover, then add a link to an image, for me it's a link inside of the vault, and then set the cover to cover. The database folder plugin had a massive update with the beta release of version 3.1 and I'm a big database folder user so there are lots of different things to go through. I'm not going to cover everything because there is so much that's changed and so many things likely to change in the future as well with all of the added features but the main ones are that when you add a column you can now pick the type of the column when you're adding the column in. So if you want to add a select column, you can add the name of the column, so new, then choose select. Then when you add the new column, you can see it's already got the select type, which is like a single drop down option. Then if you add text, they've changed the text box. So instead of it just being typeable text, it's now an expandable box that you can look at for more information, more rows and things like that, which is much easier when you're adding in notes for the table view. You could also notice at the top right, they've added in options. So you can go and import, export, look at group settings and filters, markdowns and things like that. But when we go to the filters, we can add a filter like like we did before but now when we go to add a group filter you can actually add a color to the group filter any color that you want very similar to the projects update and when you rename that filter so that group filter when it's selected it shows the color when it's not it doesn't show the color if you think I've missed something out let me know in the comment section below and all information from past present and future updates will be in the obsidian onboarding course link in the description below but until next week have fun exploring